What do you say we head down to the Convocation Center and welcome in folks? I mean it when I tell you one of the elite point guards in the nation, DJ Cooper, just off the practice floor. DJ, how are you, man? Good to hear from you. I'm good. Great to have you with us. Uh, DJ, let's uh, start right off the top with regard to, I just mentioned the, the NCAA tournament run last year. You and uh, the Cats beat Michigan and then beat South Florida and then go to the Sweet 16 and look like you're going to take out North Carolina before the loss there. But then your head coach, John Gross, leaves and in comes Jim Christian. All of you are upperclassmen. You've been in this program and starting for three years. Tell us what the transition was like with regard to having John Gross move on to Illinois, and now Jim Christian's coming in from TCU as your head coach. Um, I, I feel like it, been, it hasn't been that much different at all. You know, uh, Coach Christian has came in and did a, a great job with us. You know, he did staff and the players, you know, together. And, you know, we've just been gelling. You know, we got an upper-class team, and you know, we've been coming together. It has been coming together, and of course, uh, you are the ringleader of that basketball team. For yourself, uh, as the initiator of everything that you do with the offense, and uh, you spearhead the defensive effort as well, did you have a lot of uh, individual conversations with Coach Christian about uh, just pretty much continuing all the success you've had? In other words, that there needn't be a lot that had to be changed with uh, your basketball team? Uh, you know, Coach Christian had a lot of success, you know, coming into Mac play as well, so you know, he came in and, you know, told me what he expected, and I expected some of the same things. So, you know, we got off to a good start, you know, with, with you know, with the expectations or whatever. And the expectations are, are simply winning as we're taking a look at uh, DJ Cooper. DJ, we're taking a look at video from the MAC championship game here a year ago. Uh, that one point win uh, over Akron after you had the uh, the strong semifinal win over Buffalo. Where would you rank last year's tournament and those back to back wins here in downtown Cleveland over Buffalo and then Akron to get to another NCAA tournament? Where would they rank for you uh, as far as your your Ohio basketball? Experience? Experience and for you personally, DJ. Uh, definitely one of the best and top top three you know experiences in my life. You know, uh, you know, just because it was just so hard getting. You know, I mean, you know, competing in and night in and night out with uh, Buffalo and Akron. It was it, it was great memories and you know had, had me and my teammates come together. You know, during that run. Absolutely, uh, they, yeah, fantastic on back-to-back -back nights, and as we know, that's uh, that's what the MAC tournament is all about. Uh, and then it's uh, to the NCAA tournament, and you had the experience before. Um, uh, after your uh, your freshman year, you got a big win over Georgetown. So now here it is, your second trip to the NCAA. Lo and behold, you're matched up against the Michigan Wolverines, and of course, uh, you know that means Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway. Uh, what was the approach of the basketball team and what was your thought process coming off the win over Akron and then going into the NCAA tournament and finding out that here's Michigan, of course, the arch rival of Ohio State, as you know, but here's Michigan uh, coming up first in the tournament. Give us an idea of what that was like for you and the basketball team. Um, you know, just, just from just from my freshman year, you know, us making it, beating Georgetown and stuff like that, some of the same guys on, the same, on that same team, like me and Evo and, and uh, Big Red, so... You know, like we had confidence coming in. We knew that we we just come in and play our game and, you know, stick together. You know, we know they're going to make runs, you know, just how we respond to it and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, our attitude was just positive coming into that game. You know, we had major confidence. DJ Cooper joining us uh, out of the Convocation Center as uh, the Ohio Bobcats get ready for Toledo on Saturday night. And again, you'll see it right here on uh, Sports Time Ohio. DJ, that turns into a five-point win, and then uh, then you beat South Florida, and and then the one that uh, unfortunately eliminated you. Uh, you had a shot to put North Carolina away and go to the Elite Eight. As you look back on that, uh, though. Do you think that that turned into a driving force of an experience for all of you upperclassmen as you took that uh, disappointment on into uh, this this final season for most of you as seniors? Definitely, definitely. We're definitely disappointed. You know, with the way we ended our season, you know, last year, we felt like we kind of gave that game away against North Carolina. And, uh, you know, everybody that came back, you know, uh, we just just was motivated and all summer, you know, uh, competing with one another and uh, you know, just that. Yeah, so, uh, go for that next year for this sure. year as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, coming up this with which will be uh, coming up before we know it. Uh, uh, most uh, college basketball squads right away about the midpoint of their seasons right now, usually around a 35 game season in college basketball. And I wanted D DJ is such the consummate leader and such the uh, the t consummate team man that we wanted to go through that at first. But y all of you need to know that DJ Cooper is sitting on some statistical things that if he accomplishes, He's going to be the only player in the history of college basketball, and I'm talking about the only one in the history of college basketball to achieve 2,000 points, 900 assists, 650 rebounds, and 300 steals. DJ, I'm sure you're aware of it. You're closing in on all four of those categories. If it becomes reality, you'll be the only player that's ever played the game to go over those plateaus. How does that affect you day to day now in terms of knowing that, yeah, you know, you, you want all the team goals that you set to become reality, but that there are these personal goals that can make you absolutely the only one in the history of the game to reach these milestones? It motivates me crazy. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> my, my teammates, they, 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 they uh, I feel like it kind of mixes, you know, if, if, if I'm doing all that stuff well and, you know, goals. I mean, it's extremely a blessing, but I'm sure if I'm doing, putting those type of numbers up, that we'll be winning as well, so. No question about that. Do you, are, are a lot of your teammates, though, and I don't mean during games, but even uh, a lot of your friends around campus uh, in Athens, uh, is everybody kind of making you aware where you are in all of those categories that I mentioned as you're trying to reach these milestones? Are, are your friends talking about it to you a lot, DJ? Uh, yeah, they, yeah, you know, they always, you know, they, uh, Mentioning it to me, you know, that we're you know, just hanging out around the house or something like that. Uh, or people around campus are telling me, you know, so, you know, I'm more like, you know, the social network, so I see that type of stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mentioned those four milestones. Um, and when you're talking about point guards as well, there's only two point guards in the history of the college game that have ever surpassed 2,000 points and 900 assists in their career. Gary Payton, the glove, of course, that uh, had a tremendous NBA career, and uh, Syracuse's Sherman Douglas uh, from back in the 80s, Gary Payton, late 80s and early 90s. When you hear names like that, DJ, um, do you pinch yourself a little bit and say, wow, I mean, did you have any idea that you had, through your four years in Athens, have an opportunity to be in the categories and mentioned in the same breath as players like Gary Payton and Sherman Douglas? I mean, I had no idea, you know, you know, coming into college that, you know, it would be an elite name, you know, with those players, you know, just two other players, you know. Uh, you know, just like I said, just a blessing, you know, and uh, – I give credit to Coach Gross. You know, he had major confidence in me. You know, he he was believing in me before, you know, before I was coming in. You know, nobody, you know, pretty much believed in me. You know how he did, so. Absolutely. DJ uh, came out of uh, Chicago, uh, Seton Academy, and uh, you weren't that heralded a, a basketball player in terms of coming out of high school. So you mentioned John Gross, and do you really believe that uh, he was a driving force behind taking a shot on you, bringing you in to the program, and you flourished uh, through a lot of hard work and uh, under Coach Gross's program, right? Definitely, definitely. You know, uh, he, uh, he he started a program, and uh, he helped us get better, you know, day in, day out. And, uh, you know, I think guys just took that in, you know, for ourselves. And and, and now it's also, you know, Coach Christian, he does a great job, you know, he uh it feel like he's been here for years as well now, you know, just as how good he didn't get in with good with the guys and stuff, so it's just it's just good he has incredible range, as you're seeing uh, highlight-wise. I marvel at uh, some of the uh, the different area codes that DJ will uh, hoist the threes from, but he has uh, been the driving force behind Ohio Bobcat basketball. He's a, uh, a, a John Wooden Award nominee. He's a Bob Cousy Award nominee for the finest point guard in uh, the, the college basketball uh, during this 2012-2013 season. He's got my vote. He knows that. I've already told him that. 
that. I'm delighted at being able to call uh, so many of DJ Cooper's games during his career at Ohio University. DJ, I look forward to seeing you on Saturday, young man. Thanks for taking the time and uh, all the best to you as you, uh, you finish up your final half of your senior year. I know there's a lot of basketball ahead of you, buddy. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you Saturday. We'll see you Saturday. That's